Hello, and welcome to today's Quality Insights Home Blood Pressure Monitor Learner Program Overview. In this program, practices that participate can provide home blood pressure monitors to patients that do not currently have a monitor or to patients that do not have the resources to purchase one. To start, Practices must identify qualifying patients, usually those with uncontrolled high blood pressure, those starting a new blood pressure medication or dose, or patients with prehypertension or elevated blood pressure. We ask that you have patients complete this home blood pressure monitor loaner device agreement and sign it so that it can be scanned into the patient's medical record. This document is available from your Quality Insights Practice Transformation Specialist and also on our website. We also provide this loaner log to be used by the practice to document patient information and also monitor information for your records. Your patients may wonder why they're being asked to take their blood pressure at home. This is new to them. Explain that the American Heart Association and American College of Cardiology recommend self-measured blood pressure monitoring because it has been shown to help people attain better control of their blood pressure and reduce their risk of cardiac events such as heart attacks and strokes. As healthcare professionals, you are extremely familiar with proper blood pressure technique. Your patients, on the other hand, are likely unfamiliar with the equipment and the process. It's important to teach them proper technique so that they obtain accurate readings and to let them have an opportunity to practice before they leave your clinic. Show the patient the monitor and its parts and review the documents. Be sure they have the instruction manual included with the monitor. Plan to spend between 10 and 20 minutes teaching patients depending on their comfort level, confidence, and health literacy. This document, Now You Can Monitor Your Blood Pressure at Home, is an overview of all the steps you'll teach the patients. Be sure to fill in the blue shaded part with instructions about when and how to communicate blood pressure measures and when to call the office or seek medical attention according to your practice protocol. This handout also gives the link to Take High Blood Pressure Into Your Own Hands, a brief video that's a helpful reference. You can use it in your office, via your patient portal, or you can provide it to patients to view at home as a review of your instructions. This document, Tips for Taking Your Own Blood Pressure Readings, has some helpful patient advice on the front. We encourage you to provide this to patients so they can use the other side, which is a log for the measurements. You might need to provide several copies of the log to patients, and you might ask them to bring the log to their next appointment if that is how you wish them to communicate their blood pressure measurements. This American Heart Association infographic, Blood Pressure Measurement Instructions, or Mr. BP as we affectionately call him, Give step-by-step -step instructions for patients. We advise letting patients refer to it during your teaching, and again as they do their teach-back demonstration. You can see that it also provides a table at the bottom so that patients can see what level their blood pressure falls into. It provides a reminder for when patients should, should seek care. Be sure this advice is consistent with your practice protocol or treatment plan for the individual patient. Start your teaching by helping patients identify the best times to take their blood pressure. Most protocols advise taking two measurements together in the morning and two more together in the evening. They'll need to find a quiet time in their schedule and to be as consistent as possible in order to obtain accurate measurements. They need to avoid caffeine, alcohol, smoking and exercise for 30 minutes prior to getting started. They should also take their blood pressure medications after their measurements. Tell patients to empty their bladders before taking the blood pressure too, because a full bladder can affect their measurement. You can refer to Mr. BP as you go along. Before moving on, be sure to ask your patients, 
What time in the morning and the evening can you find a quiet time to take your blood pressure? Now that they've decided when to take their blood pressure, let's help them to find a good place. It should be a quiet space with a comfortable chair where they can sit with their back straight and supported. Instruct the patient to keep both feet flat on the floor and not to cross legs or ankles. It surprises many people to learn that this too can cause an inaccurate reading. Many patients find a desk or kitchen table to be a convenient location with a place to rest their arm and keep their monitor, infographic, and log with a pen or pencil. Let patients think of a place in their homes and be sure to ask, where in your house works for taking your blood pressure? Next, teach your patients to put on the cuff. They should use their dominant hand to place the cuff on the other arm wrapping it snugly with the tube just above the bend in their elbow. Show them how to use two fingers to check the wrap. They should be just barely able to place the fingers between the cuff and their arms. Many patients need reassurance about applying the cuff. Remind them, this may take a little practice. You will get a chance to practice before you go home today. Once properly positioned, instruct your patients to rest quietly for at least five minutes with the cuffed arm supported comfortably on a flat surface at our heart level. They should sit calmly and not talk. We recommend against using electronic devices while resting. After the rest period, they can press the start button on the monitor and the cuff will inflate just as they're used to in the office. Then it will deflate and the blood pressure numbers will appear on the screen. At this time, you can explain about the systolic and diastolic, or top and bottom, numbers and instruct them to disregard the pulse rate unless part of the individual's care plan. They will record the measurement on their log or in whatever manner your protocol uses. Next, they will take another rest period, one minute this time, and then take a second reading. Remind your patients it's important to rest quietly before taking your blood pressure measurement. When the two measurements have been taken and logged, instruct your patients to compare their numbers with the table at the bottom of the infographic to determine their blood pressure measurement. This is a good time to reiterate your instructions about when to call your office or seek medical attention. These three documents that we just reviewed and are shown here on the slide are also available from your practice transformation specialist or on the Quality Insights website. Now let's talk about returns of the monitors and assessments. Patients should keep the monitor as long as the provider deems necessary, usually between two weeks and one month, and they should supply their blood pressure readings back to the practice according to your protocol, usually by paper log brought to their next appointment or possibly by reporting them into the patient portal, or whatever manner your practice decides. When the patient returns the monitor, we ask that you have them complete this self-measurement of blood pressure assessment. This is a brief form that consists of 13 questions and is available from your practice transformation specialist. It's very important that we get these assessments back in order to understand how this program is serving your practice and your patients. The device should be properly cleaned and sanitized according to OSHA and CDC guidelines. Then ensure that it's powered off and stored in your designated area in the office. And sign off on the loaner log that the monitor was returned to ensure that the same packaging, cuff, and accessories are still present. We also ask that your providers or practice complete this 10 question assessment. It only needs to be completed annually. And again, it's very important to us to ensure that we are providing a helpful program and meeting your practice needs. Please return all patient assessments and the record of the number of monitors you lent out and returned to Quality Insights on a monthly basis by the 15th of the following month. We ask that the provider assessments be returned annually. All these documents should be sent to 
the contact information shown on the slide, Ashley Biscardi at qualityinsights.org. We thank you for your participation in the Quality Insights Home Blood Pressure Monitor Loaner Program and for your continued partnership. Have a good day.